Hey guys, this is Scott with Mac Tuts, and today I'm going to walk you through a couple of iTunes built-in features for keeping your library clean. So let's take a look here. You've got my massive music library. Most of it's pretty well organized, but first what we're going to do is go to File and Display Duplicates. Now most of my duplicates are already have already been deleted, so what you're seeing here is songs that exist on more than one album. For example, Ain't She Sweet by the Beatles is on Anthology 1 and Anthology 3. So I'm not actually going to delete anything here, but this is a nice feature to use if you have uh, multiple copies of the same album or incomplete copies of albums. And you can search through and find tracks with the same title and, uh, and listen to make sure that you don't need both copies. So I'm going to go back to my music library, and uh, the first thing I need to do is locate the tracks that I want to change. So right now I know that I have an album called Blood Pressures by The Kills. So I'm going to search for The Kills. Okay, so I found Blood Pressures by The Kills, and I notice there's a couple of problems. I've got a, uh, a track title that should be capitalized that's not, and there's a spelling error in the album uh, title name. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the title of the track that needs changed. I'm going to right-click on the track, and I'm going to select Get Info. And here you've got your basic information for the track. It tells you what kind of audio file it is, uh, the bit rate and the sample rate and the resolution and all that kind of stuff. And you've got a series of tabs up top for sorting, options, lyrics, artwork. The one that we're focused on today is info. So here is the info pane for the track. It's got the artist, the album, the title, the year, all of the information that you might need. So this one just needs to be capitalized. So I'm going to change that real quick. I'm going to hit OK and you can see that the change is reflected immediately right here. You can edit any of the single track information from that screen that we were just at. But what happens when you need to edit all of the information for a series of tracks, say in a complete album or everything by one artist? Well this album the title is misspelled and the year is incorrect so I'm going to select everything and I'm same thing I'm going to right click and click get info and it's going to ask me if I want to edit mul information for multiple items. And the reason that it does this is this is a very powerful feature that can back you into a corner if you accidentally edit the information for multiple items incorrectly. So I'm pretty sure that I want to change all of the information in all of these tracks, so I'm going to click yes. You notice that the multiple item information pane is a little bit different than the single item information pane. It has selected fields uh, with little tick boxes next to it. The tick boxes are a little bit of a safeguard, so you know that when you click that OK button, only fields that have the checkbox checked will be edited. So the artist name is, is pretty OK. Uh, the album is misspelled, so I'm going to tick that box, and I'm going to correct the spelling error. And the year, actually, this album came out in 2011, so I'm going to change that as well. And so I'm going to click OK, and you can see that all of that information was changed just there. So that's starting to look pretty good. You've got all of your uh, track titles spelled properly, uh, the artist, the album spelled properly, the correct year. And the last thing I want to do is um, make sure that the genre is appropriate. So I'm going to start a track. Okay, so indie itself is not a very descriptive word for a genre, and the kills are a little bit heavier than what most people might consider indie, so I'm going to want to change that to something more like rock. So we're going to select all and go back in to get info. We're going to hit yes, and then I'm going to go down here to Indie, and I'm going to change this to Rock. Now while we're here, I also noticed that all of my track numbers are labeled correctly, but I would also like to have access to how many tracks are on the album whenever I'm listening to a single track. So what I can do is you can display track numbers as a number out of the total number of tracks on the album. And now you don't have to do that one by one. You can just click this tick box right here, and I can put the total number of tracks on the album, which is 11. And I can do that without editing the track number here. So when I hit OK, after it processes, all of this information has now changed. The genre for all 11 tracks are rock, and now each track says 1 out of 11, 2 out of 11, and so on. So that's looking pretty good in this view. Uh, but there are a few more things that I can add that will really flesh out the music in my library, make it more complete. So the first thing that we're going to do so I can select all again, I can go back in to get info, and hit yes, and now you'll notice that there's an artwork pane here. So this album has no album artwork, but if I tick this box and I double click on the artwork field, it'll open up a file finder. 
So I've downloaded the album artwork for Blood Pressures, and it's in here in my downloads folder. So if I navigate to that and hit the open button, you can see that it's been put in there. So if I hit OK, and this takes a little bit longer to process because you're adding album artwork to each track. But now if I display this album in cover flow, the album artwork is right there. Finally, I'm going to go over one last thing that can only be done when you select a single track. But if you right click on a single track and click get info, if you go over here to the lyrics tab, you'll see a massive empty field. And I'm not going to put anything in there right now, but you can search the internet for the lyrics to all of your tracks. And you can copy and paste them into this field. When you click OK, they will be saved to that. And when you play this track on your iPod, the lyrics will be displayed over top of the album artwork. Adding all of these extra features to your music in your iTunes library really gives you a sense of having a full library, and it really increases the emotional connection to your music because that's what music's all about. And don't forget that you can repeat any of these steps for your movies, TV shows, podcasts, books, and even apps. As long as you have that option in the Preferences menu checked, to keep your iTunes media folder organized, all of these changes will be reflected in the media files themselves so that when you get a new Mac and you need to import all of your music into a new iTunes library, all of that data will carry over and you won't have to reorganize later. So as long as you repeat these steps as necessary to get all of the music in your library organized and then stay on top of it and not let anything get backed up so that you get disorganized again, you should be much happier with your music library. Thanks for watching.